Dutch came to play. Today we're talking about Thanksgiving. It's a time that we give thanks for family, food, friends. We celebrate the harvest season and we honor the indigenous people who were the first keepers of this land. I've got some fun activities, songs, and a very cool snack. Let's go. Music, harvest songs. Okay, this song is a harvest song and I'm gonna teach you the hands first and then we're gonna sing it together. So it's called Oats, Peas, Beans, and Barley Grow. So we're gonna count off those foods with our fingers first. So oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. And we're gonna pretend this is the earth and these are our seeds sprouting or growing up. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Can you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow? First, the farmer sows the seeds, and so is another word for plant. So we're gonna pretend that we're planting seeds. Then he stands and takes his ease. He stamps his foot. Now I'm sitting, so I'm, I mean, I guess I could do this, but I'm just gonna use my hand, pretend it's a foot. Stamps his foot two times, clapped hand two times, turn around and view his land. And then we're gonna sing it again, but this time the farmer is gonna harvest a scene. So we're gonna pretend we have a hoe and we're harvesting. Okay, so follow along with the hands and let's go. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Can you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow? First the farmer sows the seeds, then he stands and takes his ease. He stamps his foot and claps his hands and turns around to view his lands. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Can you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow? Next the farmer harvests the seeds. Then he stands and takes his ease. He stamps his foot and claps his hands and turns around to view his lands. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Can you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow? Great, now you try. So this next song is called Farmer Brown and it's actually a number subtraction song and it's about a farmer who is harvesting his apples goes like this. Farmer Brown had five green apples hanging on a tree. Farmer Brown had five green apples hanging on a tree. Then he plucked one apple and he ate it greedily. Leaving four green apples are hanging on a tree. Farmer Brown had four green apples hanging on a tree. Farmer Brown had four green apples hanging on a tree. Then he plucked one apple and he ate it greedily, leaving three green apples a-hanging on a tree. Farmer Brown had three green apples hanging on a tree. Farmer Brown had three green apples hanging on a tree. Then he plucked one apple and he ate it greedily, leaving two green apples a-hanging on a tree. Farmer Brown had two green apples hanging on a tree. Farmer Brown had two green apples hanging on a tree. Then he plucked one apple and he ate it greedily. Leaving one green apple a hanging on a tree. Farmer Brown had one green apple hanging on a tree. Farmer Brown had one green apple hanging on a tree. Then he plucked that apple and he ate it greedily. Leaving no green apples a hanging on a tree. Now you try. Arts and crafts, pumpkin pie garland, what you'll need. Paper plate, orange and brown felt, or paper. Pencil, scissors, glue stick, three cotton balls, twine, tape. First, I turn my paper plate over and place it on top of my orange paper. Then I use my pencil to trace around the plate to make a circle. Next, I remove the plate and use my scissors to cut out the circle. Then I use my glue stick to thoroughly cover the paper plate. Then I place my orange circle on top and press it down. It starts to flare out in some spots on the edge, so I just use my scissors to snip those spots. This helps the paper lay flat on the plate. Once it's secure, I can cut each piece of pie. I start by cutting the circle in half, then I cut each half into thirds. 
and I just eyeball it. No need to make them all exact. Now the other half. Next, I cut one inch strips of my brown paper. I need six. This is the pie crust. Now I take one piece of pie and one pie crust and hold them up next to each other around the top curved edge. I kind of measure how long I need the pie crust to be so it matches the pie, making sure to cover the top so the white plate doesn't show underneath. Then I cut off the excess brown paper and use the glue stick to glue it in place. Lastly, I take a cotton ball and pull it apart into two pieces. Then I put a circle of glue in the center of the pie and place the cotton on top. Now we've got whipped cream. Yum. Continue until you've completed all six pieces of pie. All right, I've got my six pieces of pie. Now I grab my twine and get ready to string them on. This step is easier on the floor. I lay my six pieces upside down and try to evenly space them out. Then I take my six feet of twine and lay it on top, leaving about one foot on each end. I use about three pieces of tape per piece of pie to secure it on the twine, near the top. Once all six pieces are where I want them on the twine, I can find a mantle, shelf, or bookcase to tape it up. Happy Thanksgiving! On a side note, I did this craft with both my kids and my younger son didn't want to make his into a decoration. He wanted to play with it. So we've been playing pie shop every day after school. Snack, purple sweet potato, what you'll need. Sheet pan, purple sweet potatoes, olive oil, fork, knife, butter, salt, brown sugar. I'm gonna wash and dry my sweet potatoes and then lightly coat them with olive oil. Next, I'll pierce each potato with a fork about three times. Now I'll put it into the oven. Notice there's no preheating. Just put your potatoes in, set your oven to 400 degrees, and set a timer for 45 minutes. I just pulled them out of the oven and they are hot, so make sure a grown-up is helping you. I take my knife and I make a cut down the middle of each potato. Then I'll carefully pinch and push the two ends together to let steam escape. Use your knife to help open them up so they can cool. Let them cool from five to 15 minutes. Now I am just dazzled by this vibrant purple color. It has got to be one of the most beautiful foods in the world. It's also filled with vitamins and nutrients so you get to eat something gorgeous and help your body get stronger. For the last step, I'm going to get a small pad of butter and place it inside the potato where I've opened it up. Then I'm going to sprinkle one with salt and one with brown sugar, your choice, sweet or savory. I like savory, my kids like sweet. All right, plate it up and it's ready for your Thanksgiving feast. Definitely the easiest side dish to make and I would argue the best part of the entire meal. Enjoy. Mm. Is it weird if I have one of these every day? Where I'm from in Northern California, the Putlin people kept this land. I honor them by helping to keep the earth clean and telling my children their story. I've included a link so you can find out which indigenous tribe were the original keepers where you live. It's really cool to learn about another culture's language, what they ate, grew, and traded. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and always remember, you are seen, you are heard, and you belong right here. Bye.